good afternoon and welcome back to the afternoon session now we are with us another eminent personality dr kajal chakraborty it's uh, i'm very happy to introduce him before you with a brief introduction kajal chakraborty uh, he did his msc in 1999 agriculture chemicals indian institute of uh, indian agriculture research institute in new delhi and he obtained his phd degree in 2002 in the same institute and he did uh, post doctoral research uh, research in 2010 university of mississippi usa he is currently working as senior scientist in a cmfri cochin and uh, i'm very happy to uh, brief his contribution towards research research contributions are bioactive molecules discovery from marine organisms and microorganisms as therapeutic agents against various diseases food chemistry aquatic food product technology and development of high value products for health management his his research work develop a potential pharmacore leads and protocols to prepare various nutraceuticals and functional food supplements enriched with lead molecules with bioactive properties against various drug targets for use against hypercholesterolemia diabetes hyperthyroid then hypertension inflammatory and various metabolic disorders these technologies were patented and commercialized to leading wellness pharmacological uh, 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 pharmaceutical companies the work of his group on the bioactive properties of marine and microbial uh, microbial uh, polyketide chemistry developed an antimicrobial therapeutic products for use against multi resistant gram negative pathogens the libraries of specialized bioactive compounds developed by his research group compose an abundant resource for future bioactivity research and will provide promising therapeutic candidates against various human ailments his work on polyunsaturated fatty, fatty acids chemistry and nutritional biochemistry are noteworthy he is the recipient of many awards and honors to name a few icar rafi ahmed kidwai award for outstanding research in agricultural sciences in 2017 professor hpc shetty award in 2017 by asian fishery society indian branch dr cv kulakarni best young scientist award by icar mumbai in 2013 member of technical expert committee on aquaculture and marine biotechnology of dbt indo us task force a uh, task force member subject expert by us indian science and technology endowment fund under indo us science and technology forum of department of science and technology government of india in 2013 a pran ora award by indian science congress association in uh, 2008 professor tj pandian and aj matti award by asian fishery society indian branch in 2008 he is a member sectional committee of a and fs by 96th session of indian science congress in 2008 gold medal and best phd thesis award uh, for his uh, best uh, thesis uh, uh, phd thesis in 2003 best paper award at 13th annual sark congress university of uh, paradian sri lanka in 2001 csir pgia uh, university of paradian international travel grant from council of scientific and industrial research and university of paradinia to travel at the university of paradinia sri lanka in 2000 even he had first gold medal for best msc thesis and outstanding academic performance in indian agriculture research institute in 1999 is a uh, fellow of professional bodies like fellowship of the national academy of agricultural sciences from 1st january 2018 he is published uh, in uh, more than 150 uh, in our refereed uh, uh, research journals and he has uh, uh, published seven books and he has got uh, 12 patented to his credit, credit. total number of well. externally funded projects uh, uh, handled 12 with this brief bio data i request dr chakraborty to deliver a lecture on marine organisms as potential sources of bioactives over to you sir thank you ma'am over to you sir Agurial pharmacophores. I think it has been worked for the long time, and it is now we know all the chemicals. But this type of organisms are a newer sources, so we can derive very important biomolecules with the novel scaffolds, novel molecular entity. And there are funding agencies like DBT, DST, and MOES, which are dedicated to give fund on these particular marine organisms and the big projects they give. So that tells uh, how important the subject is. 
uh, as you know that uh, this ocean is, uh, we know less about the moons because as you know, a, it co comprises 70% of the earth is a huge and I think whatever we do work is very minuscule type of work like a coastal area. Still we could not go deep, deep into the sea because that depth and that knowledge, we, we are having very limited knowledge about the depth of the sea. So even we don't know the, what are the particular organisms are there and how important they are and the pharmacological point of view. So uh, basically we don't know basically, we are working with very minor part of the marine organisms. So we could not explore that much of marine organisms. So uh, also the marine uh, uh, environment actually provides a wide range of goods and services. So this is a source of food. As you know, the marine organisms are a source of food. Most popular example is the marine fish because you know the marine fish is the only source where we can get long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. Basically, marine fish are, are not, they get it from algae basically through the food chain. But these are the sources, potential sources of long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, C22, C22 fatty acids, which you won't get anywhere, in, including the terrestrial oils or whatever, you won't get, you won't get in the short chain fatty acids. So other than that, there are proteins, very high value, high proteins of high biological value. So basically it's very important sources of food and also valuable compounds, pharmaceuticals from the marine organisms and also several life threatening diseases. If you see the terrestrial bioactive compound discovery from the terrestrial organisms and as well as from the marine organisms, that marine discovery of the bioactive pharmacophore from the marine organisms is comparatively newer as compared to the terrestrial organisms. As you can see here, this is the one of the first drug which has been uh, isolated from a marine sponge called the Tetheia crypta by the Bergman, Bergman uh, group, group of Bergman and this has been it's been un, uh, done phase three clinical trial. This has been approved as a drug and several patents files by the different companies. This is basically azido, azido thiamidine or geodomeridine age 80 against uh, HIV and AIDS, but still date it is being used. Some of the concerns of the particular molecule is toxicity, but still date this drug is very popular because very active against the retrovirus which causes the HIV. Now the most important thing I wanted to highlight here, there is a recent boom of the marine pharmaceutical over new year, over the years is as you can see more than 18,000 compounds have been isolated as compared to the 1,55,000 plus terrestrial products. So there is a recent boom. Now if you see the marine organisms, is it not just very because there are different type of organisms which you may not be aware because we also don't know what are the types of organisms are there. Some of the organisms we know mollusks, acidians, corals, green algae. This is basically seaweed, some of the very important resources and this is cultivable. We can culture those things. Microorganisms is very important. We can cultivate in the laboratory. So uh, these are some of the corals of course, some of the corals. So these sponges, sponges are one of the species of marine organisms which have been extensively studied. And if you see the bioactive compound discovery, it is mostly many of the compounds have been discovered from the sponges and particular this group Blunt et al, these are the one of the groups which are actively working, New Zealand based group, they are actively working on natural product discovery and they have developed a database called the marine lead. So each year they document all the marine derived compounds in that database and they update in each and every year. If you are interested particularly students you can go, go through this particular review published by the Blunt et al. So each year you can get basically the marine natural product review. So they uh, uh, review all the marine uh, derived compounds in their database in the review as well as in the online database. So now why marine natural product? See most important point you can see this particular bullet here. This the chances of the drug discovery is significantly higher as compared to the terrestrial organisms. If you see the terrestrial organisms, there is a chance of 0.1 percent getting a hit, good hit from the terrestrial organism as compared to the 1% which is significantly higher from the marine organisms because and that tells that how important the subject is, how important the compounds derived from the marine natural uh, marine organisms are. So and number of new marine compounds reported each year is increasing more than 1000 compounds. So mostly largely unexplored, these I have already told 71% of the molecular entities this is most important, one of the important points here, 71% of the molecular entities listed in the dictionary of the marine natural product have 
novel molecular structure, novel molecular structure unlike that terrestrial organism, it does not categorize in the conventional classified compounds, classified class of compounds, they are having the novel chemical scaffold it's compared to around 40 percent of the dictionary of the natural product. And these marine organisms basically they are living under highly stressful condition in the oceanic environment, very high salinity, depth, depth is very high. So despite being these they have evolved to fight against these adversaries in the oceanic ecosystem. So evolutionarily they have developed the mechanisms to defend this type of adversaries in the oceanic ecosystem and that made, made them to biosynthesize the particular group of compounds which can fight against this adversary. That are one of this is one of the reasons. So they develop a newer molecular scaffold with the higher bioactive properties. And also how important the subject is this graph is also shows the graph also shows how important the subject of marine natural products are. You can see the number of patent filed which is the ready made evidence, ready made evidence how the it the science of the marine natural product is growing over the years. You can see it is 71, 75 as I told the subject is comparatively newer as compared to the terrestrial derived compounds. You can see the over the years 2005 of course if you see now I did not show the data here. Recent data shows as, a as an exponential increase of discovery of the marine natural product and the patents filed and granted on this particular area. So also some of the compounds which I wanted to show here you can see the how some of the compounds are very much complicated with a lot of stereochemistry involved and with endowed with the very high activities. So this is also some of the macrolide you can see here from marine organisms, squalamine you can get it from shark liver oil, this is the amino steroid, diketopapyrazine, some alkaloids, alkaloids is not defined at a general classification of the alkaloid like unlike terrestrial organisms. There are several amino acids like mycosporine amino acids and others from the particularly from sponge which is having multifaceted bioactive properties. Galactosiramide type of compound, this is under clinical trial and the different phase clinical trial. Some have been passed and some have been undergoing clinical trial because subject is very huge. We cannot tell the entire subject that is particularly for students. If you want to get an overview of this, you may consider reading Marine Natural Product Review, reviewed by the Blunt et al. So that you can get a clear idea of the compounds discovered from the marine organisms over different years. These are some of the compounds which I wanted to show here which are under different phase clinical trials. So now the rich discovery of the that is what I told earlier is having a considerable potential for exploitation of the compounds as also a functional food ingredient. Our laboratory works on this particular area of the functional food ingredients other than developing novel pharmacophores. These are some of the compounds which have been developed, our laboratory have been developed basically the we have de we could able to develop the library of the marine natural product. See we cannot go for synthesis immediately but this development of the library itself is a very good resource. Somebody can do the synthesis even we cannot do some people can take up because these are the some of the compounds which has been endowed with a very potential activity and worth investigating. Some of the compounds I wanted to show how important the subject is. So this is I, I just I stopped here basically I wanted to show some of the drugs whatever pharmacophores or drugs have gone to phase clinical trials. Some have been withdrawn in between due to toxicity during phase clinical trials and some have been approved. So these are one of the examples which basically a cytotoxic peptide, the hemiasterelline which have been uh, uh, isolated from the South African sponge, this particular sponge by this, uh, by this gentleman here for Intel Israel. So uh, also this has been uh, Unfortunately, it has been recently withdrawn for the further development as the phase two clinical trial. So this is the one of the problems in the discovery of the marine natural product. You do all the work from the beginning, it takes a long time to isolate and develop all the studies in the, in the preclinical clinic, uh, all the studies in vitro, in vivo to develop, it takes a quite long time. And after that it is withdrawn from the clinical trial, it is a huge expenditure also. So uh, development of new drug by the top down approach like screening based approach that is what it takes some time very long time and it may fail so many times. Dolastatin is one of the very prominent examples from the um, cytotoxic peptide from the Indian ocean molars basically see here this, see, this is a ocean molars called see here Dolabella auriculata by uh, Professor Petit University of Arizona. 
it underwent phase 2 clinical uh, trials, again the metastatic or recurrent uh, different uh, cancer cell line, but it did not move to next phase. But there are different variants of this particular compounds. So, that rollerstatic exhibited a unique interaction with the tibulin also, but there are different derivatives which are currently progressing through the clinical trial other than the particular cytotoxic dolabellin which I have, uh, dolastatin which I have mentioned here. Bryostatin is one of the prominent examples, one of the prominent examples which have been isolated from the bryozoan, bugula merida. So, you can see that uh, uh, organisms is very colorful that tells it leaps deep into the ocean basically you know they have developed that under stress condition they have developed the mechanism to deter the particular stress stressful condition that generates a very beautiful molecules. This color also, also one of the indications that it can it is capable of generating very good molecules of potential bioactivities. So, you can see these compounds by bryostatins many stereoisomers are there. So, synthesis is a really a challenge due to the different stereoisomeric uh, centers. So, this is a really a challenge for synthetic organic chemists. This has been tested up to phase 2 clinical trials as a treatment of Alzheimer's disease it is undergoing clinical trial. Spongy statin is derived from the marine sponge. This particular marine sponge from the Indian Ocean, Eastern Indian Ocean near Maldives extremely potent against different cancer cell lines. And in the US National Cancer Institute's primary screen, this list is being listed. So, this is the mechanism of action, how it does have anti-cancer anti activity, inhibits mitosis by binding in the vinca alkaloid domain by the tibulin, thus preventing the tibulin assembly. Being tried in the combination with another vincristin as a potential anti-cancer agent. You can see the compound, this is such a big compound and also many stereoisomers are there. That is what synthesis sometimes is really challenge and this is one of the challenges, one of the prominent challenges is working with natural products. Always you cannot go and yield sometimes will be very, very less, maybe very 0 0.01 percent which is not suitable even to do normal procedure like in vitro study or clinical trial and others or animal model studies. So, uh, le leaving aside the doing all, all the other trials. So, you have to go either for synthesis, so that is only the viable option to uh, go ahead further with this type of molecules, so yield is very less or the organisms which is available are available in very, very lesser abundance. This is discodermalide, it is one of the uh, compounds which has been done with Sri Lankan Sarat Gunusekara from the deep water Caribbean sponge, discoderma dissolute. I wanted to show some of the prominent examples, there are many, we cannot list out everything, maybe you can go through the review as I have mentioned here. So, this Caribbean sponge, this is also effective against different resistant cancer cell line. However, it has been dropped after phase 1 clinical trials due to toxicity, but there are different analogs which are being looked into for the phase clinical trials. Kahalalide, one of the prominent example, basically depsipeptides, small molecular weight peptides are becoming prominent candidates for drug discovery, newer drug discovery. This, this particular compound is started by Schwerer. Schwerer is one of the prominent, if you see the natural product chemist, marine natural product chemist, there are very few throughout the world. Schwerer is one of the pioneer in this subject who basically Paul Schwerer who has started this work on marine natural product chemistry and his group has started working on this particular work cyclic depsipeptides. So, uh, now his students, the, they, they are continued. So, I have, I was fortunate so working in Professor Haman's lab basically, his students lab. So, they are working in Kahalalide, particularly Kahalalide F is one of the prominent drug candidate which is undergoing phase trials, phase clinical trials and having the different variants of the 13 natural peptides isolated from this particular organisms and having tested against the different cancer cell lines. This is also Japanese sponge, this uh, 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 under preclinical evaluation is also having the telomeres against Alzheimer's disease. This molecule, if you see all the synthetic molecules are there, whatever are there, they, they have borrowed, the synthetic chemist has borrowed the concept from the naturally derived compounds. This is a basically natural inspired drug discovery. So, these molecules, so by analysis of molecular modeling, you can understand which particular part is active. So, you can go for synthesis of this part, not necessarily you need to synthesize a full molecule, entire molecule. Maybe you can synthesize some part of it which is really active, really active against the particular disease target. These are the some of the examples which are active against uh, as a basically telomerase inhibitor against Alzheimer's disease. 
these are some of the synthetic variants. So, they have did some synthetic work, you can see that they have taken some particular part of it. This in particular part of it which is basically R active, has shown activity by the details uh, modeling studies. Now, this is undergoing, this is basically natural product inspired discovery of the drug molecule, undergoing phase 2 clinical trials in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease as well as for Cygiopharina. Also, another very important area of work which my lab and my students work on this particular area, we have could able to develop many barren nutraceuticals. So, if you see this is a very newer concept basically functional food ingredient when you find it difficult to isolate suppose some organisms very difficult in abundance, isolation is difficult, yield is less. So, you have to go for and synthesis is difficult, you have to wait for maybe another 15 years, we do not have time to do that. So, this is one of the very good way to go ahead with this particular, if you find some organisms are very effective. Our laboratory has focused and if you see now CDRI which is earlier a premier organization which is focus, focusing on drug discovery, the name implies that they used to synthesize, but if you see off late, they have changed their focus on developing of nutra, this nutraceutical candidate. I was going through their website, they have developed recently to nutraceutical, so they have changed even CSIR lab, they have changed their concept because it's very easy to do work and result, you can get very fast result on this. So, these are some of the products which have been developed uh, in our lab by our students and ourselves. So, this cardiolimine anti-diabetic extract, anti-thyroidism, this has been licensed to a pharmaceutical company during last year in 2018 November against Kalumaka. This is uh, basically a mollusk, a bival mollusk, polyunsaturated fatty acid. We have developed from body oil basically unlike the cod liver oil which I will detail later on how it is not that good to have a liver oil. So, we focused on body oil with a stabilized concentrate, antimicrobial therapeutic, this has been licensed, cardal mean green algal extract. Basically, these are concentrated compound. We have identified the particular compound which are active and this has been concentrated in the particular product and this most of these are licensed to the pharmaceutical companies. These are some of the products which we have developed and licensed to the different pharmaceutical company and this we either got patent granted some of them or patent pending, FEA pending at different stages of patent grant. So, this is, these are the two products, this we have developed from the green muscle extract, green muscle which is a locally called as Kalumaka in Kerala, this is Crassustria, this is some of the uh, mola species which are available. So, uh, this has been licensed, so this I told you this has been licensed rupees 7 lakh last year, this also we license all our technologies to different pharmaceutical companies, so to take it to the people. So, now coming, this is for students, maybe I did not put up much of detailed of chemistry type of thing, so that it may be, I do not know, it's out, it will be maybe out of place. So, maybe to give an idea how it is, maybe somebody starts the work, what may be the focus of that work. So, basically how generally we should go about that. Generally, we understand we collect randomly some organisms from the marine sources and test that against the different target and see that where it is active and where not, where active, we take it and do further studies. Otherwise, we can do top down approach. There is a newer approach, intelligence metabolomic based approach or gene based, functional gene based approach. We can identify the particular gene which is responsible to elicit the particular compound and our work will be easier. That is called the bottom up approach. This is basically the steps. Generally, what we do, we collect the material, acquisition, we get the acqui acquisition, the particular organism, we develop the optimized techniques for the extraction, primary screen, we isolate the bio biomolecules, we characterize, this takes longer time, we do primary as well as secondary screens, we elucidate the structure, trials and test, we do first in vitro study, then we do in vivo animal model study, cell line study and further clinical study or preclinical or clinical studies. Then we develop the product, we do the toxicity study, we do develop IPR, so that is very important part of it and license. That should be the ideal way of developing a product from any sources. So, this I just mentioned just uh, in the last slide, there can be two approach like top down approach which generally ideally it takes a longer time it takes longer time and chances of success are very, very less. Suppose we may not get the appropriate target, we do not know what is the particular organisms. Bottom up approach as I told it can be developed on bioinformatics tools, you can develop see the database from the marine lead database, which organisms may be effective to use maybe that is what we could able to develop our arthritis product because 
I have shown you that green muscle extract, which have been a, a product was there in New Zealand. So they are marketing throughout the world, basically in the Parna Healthcare India also agent is there. So the cost is very high and the product is not developed that like a concentrated molecule is not there. So I could have, have the privilege to talk with the managing director of the company. So he is telling that product is very simple and only advantage of New Zealand is that their environment is very serene. Actually the toxicity and all the other things are not there. That is their advantage. So that can be one of the bottom up approach that is called ITK. Maybe you develop the database from the knowledge base, from the uh, database whatever or molecules, whatever the molecules are effective. Maybe you can come to know if you do a proper literature search, you can know that this molecules, this group of molecules may be effective. So better to focus on this particular molecules. Metabolomics approach and also we can do functional gene based approach. Maybe you can identify the particular gene. For example, polyketide gene is one of the genes example which elicit the polyketide type of compounds. So if you get a PKS heat, polyketide synthesis heat for the particular organism, so there is a probability that we are going, we may get a very good active compound from the particular organism. So this generally some of our work, our laboratory uh, which does against the different organisms, different organisms, this is some of the just bird's eye view, I wanted to tell you, we do against the different uh, targets, different disease target and some of the things whatever very active, we go ahead further to isolate and characterize and do further trials. So this is the part of our work we do against a different uh, target basically this is some just one some few examples what we do. So animal model studies also we do based upon that we confirm that this might be a very good candidate very good organism or very good extract to further go for isolation of the bioactive molecules. So this is some of the our work laboratory uh, uh, my student has done. So this is basically marine bacteria we do from marine bacteria basically heterotrophic or sediment associated whatever because we could able to see the marine bacteria or marine microorganisms have tremendous potential only problem of marine organisms microorganisms because as you know the culti cultivability is very less it is very it is a real challenge to tap them or to domesticate them in the laboratory culture condition. So that was a really a challenge but we did that with the different change of particular media or changing of the particular composition of the media. So this is some of the organism basically and where we could able to find some of the particular gene which could give rise to very good product like particular group of compounds. Basically you can see the 70, 700 base pair PKS gene fragment. So that clearly tells so this particular organism so might be very good to isolate bioactive compounds. So and we got, we got also really, this is called the one of the bottom up approach, we could able to get this compound, some of the furanyl polyketide compounds from the particular organisms. And this is some of the metabolomic pathway we do from the particular organisms and we corroborate the structural elucidation, structural, that structural identity of the particular compound. This is the PKAS based biosynthetic pathway, this is basically biogenetic pathway which lead to the biosynthesis of the particular compound. Seaweeds are one of the very important resources. Our laboratory works prominently on, on this particular organism, seaweed, because basically they are cultivable. We can culture these organisms and farmers also get benefited because one of our mandate is that it is for the benefit of the farmers also and society should get immediate benefit. So these are some of the compounds which could, we could able to identify or characterize from the seaweeds or marine macroalgae. Mollusk is one of the very good resource. If you see the western particular Kerala, so there are lakhs this particular, this is called the Paphia Malabarica and also in Karnataka here also it is available. So very good resource because we can cultivate this particular organisms and it is abundantly available and farmers also getting lot of benefit. Suppose you develop some particular compound from their product, farmers will get immediate benefit after cultivation. So in the downstream. So these are some of the compounds which could, could able to find various activities. Polyketides, one of the very good things like you know isopermarine, nor darpinoid, anti-inflammatory chrominyls. Some of the examples only I am showing, not going deep into the chemistry of it. So now coming to the classification of the natural product. So for the particular for students it may be useful. So you may ask uh, whether it can be classified as a particular categories of chemical compounds. If you compare with the terrestrial, it is not coming under exactly that functional a functional group like homologous series it does not come like that because classification of marine natural product is somewhat arbitrary and based upon the particular activity compounds which are very highly active. These are some of the examples of the classif classification of the marine natural product list can be broad but I have listed down some of the important biomolecules which are of bioactive importance like terpenoids or isoprenoids 
basically uh, terpenoids you might be knowing there are different classified terpenoids also monoterpenoid, sesquiterpenoid, diterpenoid, sister terpenoid coming under diterpenoid, terpenoids basically. Alkaloids is one of the very important group of compounds you can get in terrestrial organisms alkaloids so you will be knowing this like vinca rosea all that's because base basically nitrogen base alkaloids are defined as a nitrogen base basically nitrogen as compound. So in marine derived compound also alkaloids are there, there are many reports particularly tetrodotoxin you might be hearing of the puffer fish. These are also on the very toxic compound called as a tetrodotoxin which is one of the alkaloids. Manzamine, manzamine is one of the alkaloids basically from the marine sponge. Lipid derivative particularly polyunsaturated fatty acids, triglyceride, phospholipid also other than that there are many derived lipids are there, glycolipid. So this is important derivatives of high reported bioactivities. Flavonoids, so one of the very prominent group of bioactive compounds and if you see the flavonoids in marine natural product, also in terrestrial product is a huge and very big class of the compounds, particularly polyphenols are coming under this flavonoid group of chemistry. Phenyl propanoids and polyketides, these are two very important group of compounds, heterocyclic group of compounds also we can get and also I did not here list out some of the halogenated compounds. We can in marine derived organisms we there is a they can synthesize biosynthesize many halogen derived compounds particularly brominated compounds. So you can see this slide tells so how you see taxol you might be you might, you might be knowing about this particular diet basically diterpenoid basically tax taxol. So I wanted to show here so how difficult to isolate a compound. So if you want to isolate one gram of the compound particular compound you have to sacrifice 300 year old tree. So wh what is the take home message from here because we cannot sacrifice 300 years old tree. Only thing we should know the structure of the particular compound however it is very big compound that is a problem to synthesize but of course you can identify the particular part of it which is really a responsible for the bioactive properties we can go for synthetic chemistry of that particular part. But that is the greatest contribution you isolate the compounds and characterize that and develop the library of the particular compound. So this is the basically biosynthetic pathway I am not going deep into that but the take home message is that you cannot always go for isolation from the from the raw material always you have to find out some alternative. So this is the basically steroid biosynthesis you can see here this is basically acetyl coenzyme A it forms a hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A and this is one of the steps a very rate limiting step we have used to, to develop our one of our nutraceutical product which has been used against a dyslipidemia. This is the enzyme basically 3 hydroxymethyl 3 methyl glutaryl coenzyme A reductase basically rate limiting step it catalyzes. Prostaglandins are also very important uh, bioactive compounds some of them are pro-inflammatory this causes inflammation some of them are anti-inflammatory. So basically uh, these are some of the because some of the prostaglandins they basically their origin starts from N6 uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, N6 fatty acid basically inflammatory prostaglandins uh, comes from N6 fatty acid basically arachidonic acids or lower class of N6 uh, fatty acids. But uh, pro anti-inflammatory fatty acids come from N3 fatty acid long chain fatty acid that is what they tell N3 fatty acids are very good for health or health or pro having anti-inflammatory activity that is what they tell taking the fish, fish is very good for health because it contains long chain polyunsaturated fatty acid of C20 or C22 class of chemistries. So these generally have ori or originated from this you can see here PGH2 basically comes from arachidonic acid this is basically N6, N6 means at the 6 position it is having the double bond that is the chemistry of it. Alkaloids basically I told earlier it is a nitrogen containing compounds basic natural product basically alkali like compound very powerful biological activity it, if you see the alkaloids particularly terrestrial product marine problem is that we could not derive we could not understand how much depth the resource has on the marine organism that might be one of the things that we are not having that much database except a few on some alkaloids. But if you see the terrestrial algorithm there are examples of many more alkaloids which is having endowed with a very good bioactivities. So and largest class of secondary metabolites around more than 6500 members known and some are often highly toxic. So from higher plant cell domain bacteria, bacteria there are may not be many reports of uh, this type of alkaloids. So basically biosynthesis from amino acids. So this is one of the I wanted to tell some of the uh, alkaloids marine alkaloids 
which professors Haman Lab and you know, Professor Schwerer also worked on a particularly this type of compounds. Basically, this is a manzamine type of compounds, anti-malarial drug, basically under phase clinical trial basically. They did from LIC also and also marine algae, marine toxic algae also they could able to identify, isolate this type of anti-malarial manzamine derivative. This particular part is very highly toxic. Actually, their laboratory has established this particular part, the beta propylene, uh, this particular part is very highly active. But this alkaloid part, this particular lower piperazine part, it is not active. This, uh, it is active basically. This part is not active. This is neurotoxic. So, their laboratory is trying to eliminate this particular part of here and this particular part they wanted to work and develop synthetic strategy. That is what the use of molecular modeling is. Once you identify the particular template from the marine derived natural product, we can always go for synthetic chemistry in a focused manner to identify the particular template which is really active and go for synthetic chemistry of it. And this is some of the hybrid hemisynthetic lead basically this is one of the newer approach how we can work of it and even if you know that I think aspirin is highly you know that it is a painkiller basically nowadays there are labs they are working they have found aspirin is a very highly anti-cancerous effect. So, they have derived this is basically the salicylate derivative aspirin. So, they could able to derive salicylate part with the nitric oxide part, another part with the sulfated part. So, what happened in the cancer cell it just it gives around NO nitric oxide, the nitric oxide is an anti cancerous activity. So, basically they have modified the particular molecule called a very small molecule aspirin as you all know. So, it is having also anti cancerous activity when you derive make a deri de derive of the particular derivative of the particular compound. So, this hybrid hemisynthetic lead also is very good approach to design and develop a molecules with the newer with the good potential activities. So, I have just mentioned this tetrotoxin this is basically potent neurotoxin this is being undertaken for trials by several laboratories. You can see the structure that structure is very complicated and this is due to that it classified as alkaloid part of it basically the nitrogen base. So, this is the Aristoche basically from these are from the terrestrial of course and this is from the bacteria streptomyces. Flavonoids as I told is very important resource of bioactive compound basically largest group of naturally phenolic compound. Phenolic compound is one of the largest very important group of natural resources and many bioactive compounds have been developed from the phenolic based compounds. Flavonoids are throughout are thought to be antioxidants many activities are there anti inflammatory, anti diabetic, anti carcinogenic. And basically biosynthetic origin is basically coming from the ischemia acetoteriate pathway and also the acetogenin pathway and also of hybrid origins are there. So, now how, how to move around from the traditional method to new trend. So, there are different advanced technique of going to hyphenated technique from the traditional method. Suppose who isolate the particular compound go for structural characterization and see that whether purity is there in a very very stand alone process it takes time. There are hyphenate technique like you isolate the particular compound and by the HPLC or preparatory HPLC and go to MS you understand the what is the molecular weight of the particular compound know about the structural fragment and go to NMR to understand what are the fragment fingerprints of the particular molecules and go ahead of deriving the particular structure. In India this type of facilities are not there one or two are there but outside it is being carried out. So, because of this uh, extremely higher cost many laboratories cannot accommodate this particular type of facilities, but this is going to come this is called the hyphenated method basically and also we can go ahead I understanding what are the database of this particular marine derived compound. I told as I told earlier marine lead is one of the dedicated database only for marine derived compound. You know I think probably you know about SciFinder, SciFinder is the generic like all like terrestrial and marine and everything it encompasses everything either from terrestrial as well as marine. But this anti marine, marine lead, this particular two database only encompass marine derived compounds. So, first you may go ahead through this particular database and see your compounds are there or not. So, that also you can understand how much novel your compounds are. So, that also give you a ready made idea. And also you can understand what are the types of compounds they have put in the database. So, you can understand what group of compounds maybe you can work with, which is endowed with the very high bio, bio, biological bio, bioactive properties. So, this is basically coming under de replication. You basically fragment your work in an easier way, basically bottom up approach or de replicated approach to join your molecules from the back side, like back calculation, and understand your work become easier. 
So, structural and stereochemical accuracy as I told earlier that there are many stereo centers in the marine derived natural product and it is a really a challenge to understand the particular stereochemistry of the marine derived natural product. So, stereochemical accuracy is very, very important. For example, I will give you a very small example. If you see beta carotene from the carrot and whatever you get from sigma, the particular beta carotene, beta car carotene from the carrot is highly antioxidant, it is very good for health. But when you buy that from the particular company, you can see it is written as a carcinogenic. What is the reason? Simple reason, it is having the many double bond inside that particular compound. When the double bonds are in the cis configuration, it is having high activity. When it goes to trans configuration, this is energetically favorable configuration, it is having anti-cancer activity. So, you have to be very, very careful while assigning the particular stereo isomerism attribution this is very, very important particularly for the deriving the natural attributing natural derived compounds. And also go for the total synthesis of the natural product that is one of the approaches in long run that is to be needed to be followed. Metabolomics is one of the important approach and we can question the biosynthetic origin. What is the biosynthetic origin of the particular group of compounds which will be working on biosynthetic gene clusters. There are many works, I told one our, one our work carried out in our laboratory on the polyketide chemistry which we have followed the biosynthetic gene cluster. There are known examples, for example, salinosporamide, one of the particular compound where many patents have been filed on the particular compound and they have followed biosynthetic gene cluster approach to isolate the particular compound, salinosporamide. That made their work easier and many compounds have been isolated from the particular organism, one organism itself they could able to identify many bioactive compounds. So, that is the advantage of biosynthetic gene cluster to identify the functional genomics, to go for the functional genomics and also by culturing the microorganism. That is what I told, the microorganisms are tremendous resource, is a tremendous resource. If you see that our evolution like we are living in a, if you see the earth has come maybe, if you see from the 6, 12 to 12 like 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. earth has originated, it starts to started. So, microorganisms started from there and if you see microorganisms, we have originated like dinosaurs came around 10 to 11 p.m. of the total day. So, that much time microbes have got evolution and human being came just now, maybe a few seconds back of night 12, 12, 12 p.m., 12 a.m. So, that much evolution it has undergone this microorganisms. So, tremendous resource of bioactive molecules, only difficulty is there how you cultivate the particular microorganisms, it's very difficult to cultivate them in the laboratory culture conditions. So, that will be really a challenge. So, these are some of the compounds where biosynthetic pathways have been evolved, have been developed in that biosynthetic gene cluster have been developed. You can see this is one of the I just mentioned just now here, these are many examples, I am not mentioning each one of them, it takes long time. So, for example, one of the examples, salinosporamide A, which how biosynthetic gene cluster has been developed, I wanted to show here. So, you can see the first completed marine actinomycetid genome sequence was for this particular base pair from the salinospora tropica, benthic marine bacterium. And it revealed the molecular basis of at least 17 natural product biosynthetic pathway. This is very, very astonishing. We cannot get from one organism, you could able to identify based on biosynthetic pathway this many organisms. So, chances of heats are much more than that of the, if you do the conventional approach. So, this tropica dedicates a large percentage of the genome, around 10 percent. This is really high to the natural product assembly, which is a greater than the previous streptomyces genome sequences. So, these are some of the work which has been carried out this particular gentleman here, the complex secondary metabolomine in the marine actinomycetes salinospora tropica published in PNAS. You can just refer this publication. This is the biosynthetic gene cluster, how they have developed through the metabolomics and biosynthetic gene cluster pathway and they could able to identify around 17 novel natural compounds, bioactive compounds. So, this is some of the assembly line of biosynthetic salinosporamide, how they have developed this biosynthetic pathway to develop that and also they have attributed based upon their biosynthetic pathway the correctness and correct stereochemical configuration of the particular compound which have been characterized. This is some of the works carried out uh, by my student in our lab, antibacterial aryl, aryl crown polyketide from the bacillus subtilis associated with this uh, particular seaweed, basically heterotrophic bacteria and we follow again, I told that this is a PKS gene product, polyketide synthesis and we could able to find this beautiful molecule, very high activity of this particular compounds. 
So, this is a structural attribution, I am not going detail into the chemistry part of it. We have developed the biosynthetic origin of the particular compound which clearly corroborates the structural identity of the particular compounds. This is a part of the structural elucidation, so not to go into detail, this is the biosynthetic origin which you have developed in our laboratory which reduce the, which also attributes the particular compound which have been characterized. So now what is the future of the marine drug discovery? Of course, marine as I told that we could able to get very little fragrance of the marine organisms, only maybe working in the coastal area, we could not go deep into the sea because very difficult to get access, very difficult to get, uh, that is one of the reasons we could not get much of the compounds, maybe number of compounds are still less because we could not get access to the particular organism which are live deep into the sea. So you can see here in his Gravik, William Gravik is one of the pioneer research uh, scientist, marine natural product chemist, so he is working on this marine natural product chemistry basically, so in his review article, he has been a PNAS, he has published, he has written rate of the discovery from the marine natural, marine world, seven clinically useful and approved drugs of 22,000 molecular entities. This is important, one drug per 3,000 screened is approximately around 1.7 to 3.34 better than the industry average. See industry demand one in 5,000 to 10,000 tested compounds. But if you work with marine derived compounds, he has extensively studied, he's one of the pioneering research scientists, William Gravick. So, he has done, so he has told around 1.7 to 3.3 fold better than the industry average. So this is the time actually another issue it takes a marine drug discovery because molecule is sometimes very big to attribute the stereochemistry, appropriate stereochemistry and correct structural entity sometimes it determined it takes years of time. So it takes time to determine the structure. This is some of one of the compounds macrolactin derivatives which one of my students ha ha has done. So this is the dereplication guided metabolomics. As I told earlier, we can go by dereplication guided metabolomics like a bottom up approach. And this is the thing, some of the things which I have told earlier, the dictionary of the marine natural products. And this, this is the ratio which shows that ratio of discovery of to get a good hit from the marine natural, marine organisms is relatively higher as compared to that of terrestrial organisms. So I, this is a hyphenated method basically HPLC, MS, LC, NMR. Algorithms you can develop, molecular mass is very important, molecular formula, this basically a deduplicated approach by the mass spectroscopy based based molecular identification. So these are some of the molecular uh, the compounds which has been identified in our laboratory from the mollusk. We extensively study from mollusk due to the simple reason that it is being farmed by the particular farmers in the coastal region of the Kerala. So, we could find it easy to get access to the particular organisms and this type of mollusks are being consumed at the coastal area of the Kerala as well as Karnataka for a very long time. And there are literature that if you take that, it is having the very good effect on health and also nutrition. So also the phytoplankton is one of the very important resource, basically marine mac microalgae which is one of the very important resource which generally elicit very good bioactive compounds. So this is one of the compounds which have isolated aquastatin from the marine microalgae which is basically PTP1B inhibitor, protein tyrosine phosphatase 1 basically anti-diabetic inhibitor, this is anti-diabetic. So we have also targeted as one of the target as PTP1B tannicolide which have been isolated from the cyanobacteria marine algae. Marine algae advantage is that you can culture in that in your laboratory so that in long run you can have an access of the marine organism, marine particular bioactive compounds. This is also PTP1B4B B inhibitor, protein tyrosine phosphatase 1B inhibitor, salinosporamide which I mentioned earlier as in the biosynthetic gene cluster in my uh, one of my previous slides. So has been approved in the drug approval, this is the trade name and has been against a multiple bioloma, highly functionalized gamma lactam, beta lactam bicyclic code, this particular part of it. So they are now synthesizing leaving aside because this part is cytotoxic, is not very highly active and also causes steric interference. So based upon the molecular modeling, they could identify this particular part is bioactive. So they are focusing on synthesizing this particular part of the compounds and also you can say, I was mentioned earlier, there are many compounds with the halogenated substitutions, chlorine like a bromine, there are, you can get many examples from the marine compounds which possess halogen compound, halo, halogens as their prominent elements. This is one of the uh, organisms, which is a new alkaloid, I told alkaloids are there. These are basically comparatively simple alkaloid, which is having the cytotoxicity, fungus, this particular fungus, 
this is a particular compound is a 14 member phenyl acetic acid macrolactone. Macrolactone is one of the very good candidate. In our laboratory, we have isolated many macrolactone derivatives, which you would be able to find as a very good activities against the different disease target. DHA rich oil, basically polyunsaturated fatty acid, C22 and N3 polyunsaturated fatty acid, basically. So, this has been licensed to this particular company. Nanochlorosis is one of the microalgae, which is also eat, we can use as food, food item it is available. So, basically diacylglycerols, digalactosyl diacylglycerols, which we can find in shark liver oil. Shark liver oil is very, because we get this type of compounds here. But this particular organisms is very, you can get this type of compounds very easily. This is a basically anti-inflammatory agent. Marine bacteria, some of our laboratory, what we have carried out. So, we are having the resource of the particular marine bacteria, which you are able to isolate and cultivate in our laboratory culture condition. This is some of our work, which is antibacterial activity of the bacillus subtilis. So, this is the part of the structural elucidation. This is also macrolactin, we just mentioned. This is one of the very prominent group of compounds, which has shown very good bioactivities. So, aryl crown polyketides, this is one of the macrolactin compounds, basically aryl crown polyketide from the bacillus, heterotrophic bacillus subtilis associated with the CV is anthocyanin CV. CV means marine macroalgae. So, you are able to identify the particular organism. And another very important thing we could able to observe the particular heterotrophic bacteria, but detailed studies need to be carried out. We could, we could want to see how the relation is that seaweed associated heterotrophic bacteria is that. So, we could able to find very similar type of compounds in the bacteria as well as the seaweed which host the particular bacteria. So, that tells there are some relations, but detailed study we did not carry out. So, that is a very interesting area of work, basically marine ecology, we can understand the how that gene pool also you can work on gene pool level, how it is working, how it is coming, this particular compound is being biosynthesis. Of course, we have hypothesized some of the steps, how synthetic scheme, scheme of the biosynthesis, how it is coming from here to here from the biosynthetic, from the CV to the bacteria. This I just shown in one of my earlier slide. These are some of the compounds from the bacteria, what we could have, we could able to isolate. Basically, antibacterial polyketides, these are polyketides are one of the prominent group of compounds. This is a biosynthetic pathway which you could develop, which would lead to the compound biosynthesis. Also, it attributes the structural configuration of the particular identity that we could able to correctly identify, correctly elucidate or characterize the particular compound. This is again the biosynthetic pathway of that, how this is the compound basically, what you have isolated and we could able to attribute the biosynthetic pathway or the polyketide biosynthetic pathway, how the compound have been biosynthesized. This is some one of our products, which is uh, we it is under licensing, being licensed. So, we will go for licensing. Basically, wound dealing property, which you are able to find a very good wound dealing property of the particular compound, which have, is being filed for patent application. We can see here basically the uh, uh, how is the wound dealing. This is the commercial formulation. Basically, we have taken the untreated, this is the untreated fibroblast cell and this commercial formulation. And this is our product. We can see there is no significant difference and wound could able to heal in this particular. So, I am not showing very detailed study, we have done the detailed study of the particular formulation and as well as the toxicity analysis. So, the sponges is one of the, you can see the beautiful color, colorful sponges, which itself tells these compounds are the reservoir of very important bioactive molecules. Anything so you, see, you can see with color, you can understand, no, they have very important compounds with some bioactive properties. So, you can see the colorful organism because this they are basically fighting under, under stressful environment to biosynthesize the bioactive compounds. This is the Bergman, this is, I told you, he is the pioneer actually, he is called the, one of the fathers of the marine natural product chemistry. He has isolated this spongothymidin or AJT, which I have shown in one of my earlier slides. Basically, nucleoside derivative AJT, which has been isolated from the Cryptothecia crypta, a particular marine sponge. These are the variants of the particular compounds. You can see these are the variants and still being used, but the only problem with the toxicity of this particular compound, but still it is the first effective drug against AIDS basically, but still it is being used. And there are many patents filed against this, and against this particular compound, many companies filed and also there are many litigations. So, if you want to see the litigations against a patent file, you should go ahead studying this particular compound. So, how with one compounds or their variants, how many companies has filed, because this, it shows the importance of this group of, the, of this compound against the HIV. 
So, Avaral against escutarpine hydroquinone with a rearranged Dreman skeleton, basically diterpenoid. So, I told in one of my earlier slides, diterpene is one of the major group of compounds in the marine natural product. Spongy statin, here this is the organism, you can see the structure, how big it is and many stereoisomeric center. So, beautiful molecules, very, very highly active against human cancer cell line. But of course, you have to derive the synthetic process, how to go ahead and many laboratories are working on this particular compound. Some laboratories are working, these particular compounds, many laboratories are working. One part is been synthesized by, by, by some particular laboratory, another is from Japanese laboratory, because Japanese are very good in synthetic chemistry. So, that Japanese group they are developing, some American group this is working on the particular part and they are, they are developing how to hybridize the particular part of it. But real challenge again, there are serialized to just in every stoppage. So, that is the real challenge. So, cyclic deficit peptides, so you can see these are basically cyclic peptide or cyclotides basically, you can call other way, sescuterpene, africanin, these are some of the one of the, some of the few major compounds, major compounds what I am showing, literature is really, really huge. Pseudotyrexin, this is basically anti-inflammatory, also it's been licensed to many companies including some of the uh, companies like, you know, Estee Lauder under the brand name Resilience, it is being sold, it's anti-inflammatory, analgesic wound healing and it is cross some of the phase clinical trial, marine macrolide, spongiostatin, this is basically macrolide compound, this acetylenic alcohol, but here this is a two racemic mixture basically, sometimes very difficult to get in natural product a racemic mixture and the terminal acetylenic group, but this I have taken from the particular literature, but this may be an artifact maybe while purifying the particular compound maybe an artifact has been formed which has been formed as a racemic mixture because in natural derived compounds you will get only one racemic, it won't get racemic mixture, it should be a pure uh, isomer. So basically the neutral from marine algae, marine algae or seaweeds are one of the prominent marine resources to identify the particular molecules, bioactive molecules, pachyductal you can see these are some of the compounds from the which are characterized, this is the dolastatins also from the Dolabellella aureata, basically C here, they have isolated cytotoxic, meros, nor sescuterpene, because one carbon is less means it is nor, sescuterpene means C15, basically it is C14 here, so with the arom use, uh, aromatic moiety and the disubstituted uh, methoxy at the other position, at the para substituted position. Meroditerpenes, so, anti proliferative meroditerpenoid, this is basically the unconventional terpenoid, not exactly the terpenoid basically, but coming in the terpenoid class of chemistries. Bromophenols, I told one of my earlier uh, slides that uh, halogenated compounds is one of the important things which we can get in the marine derived compounds, which you may not get in many terrestrial organisms, and it also it, due to the bromine, it shows very high activity in some of the compounds. So, this has been one of the compounds which you have licensed basically uh, from the seaweed or marine macroalgae. This is the commercial green uh, algal extract which you have licensed. Basically, this uh, act against the pro-inflammatory mediators. These are pro-inflammatory mediators. We did detailed study in the various laboratories and also we have carried out trials in hospitals in Amala Cancer Research Center. This toxicity also we could have carried as a part of this study which has shown as a more than LD50 value is more than 4000 milligram per kg body weight means it is like a food what you generally daily is a 4000 milligram per kg body weight means it is just like a food. So, this has been licensed to the particular company. So, we get royalty each and every year. So, these patents have been granted in two of two patents we got for this particular product. Also type 2 diabetes this has been licensed to the company also in the, during uh, to the particular company. So, it is inhibitor of the dipeptidyl peptide is 4, that is the target we have worked and tyrosine phosphate is 1B, PTP1B4 inhibitor basically and also it does not have the systemic toxicity LD50 value is more than 2000 milligram per kg per day which means it is safe. So, this is the I am not discussing into detail how is the mechanism of action of this uh, protein tyrosine phosphatase. DPP4, this one of the target is for a new target basically as to develop anti-diabetic medications. This is some of the results as you can see here, the streptogotosin induced around 400. This is our compound which you have an isolated active ingredient and this is the formulation. You can see it is near to the control. This is the HB1A4 which you have been carried out 
in different laboratories. So this also has been licensed to the company. Also we have developed in our laboratory anti-hypercholesterolemic extract. This earlier, in one of my earlier slides I told this is basically HMG CO reductase inhibitor which generally is the rate limiting step for the conversion of acetyl coenzyme A to the mebalonate. This, this enzyme basically it catalyzes the rate limiting step and also it activates the lipoprotein lipase. So these are the two targets we have followed. This is one, some of our results, some part of our results basically. This is a triglyceride, you can see high fat diet we have put here and our compound and active ingredient it has shown significant reduction of the triglyceride and other parameters, other lipidic parameters. And this has been carried out in hospitals. So HMG CO reductase inhibitory activity, some of the part of our work which have been, and of course you cannot compare with the standard statins, but of course if you can see some of the compounds which have been isolated in our laboratory is shown very good activities. This is the statin of course standard, so but it cannot be compared, but statin has its own adverse effects. So it has shown very good activities. This we have, this compound we have concentrated in our product to develop these compounds, our products. So this is the part of the trials. You can see that lipid globules here, histopathological evolution of that control and in our product you can see that that lipid globules is near like a normal. Also hypothyroidism extra, this is the last year we have licensed to a company, 2018. Basically this increases the activity of the selenodiiodinase to produce metabolically active thyroid hormone T3. And also we could able to find there is a significant reduction of the lipid globules in the liver, which is one of the part as because you know hypothyroidism patients, there are problems of accumulating lipid globules in the liver. So this has also been licensed to the companies. This is the mode of action, basically I am not going much into detail, the T4 to T3, this is the step where the selenodiiodinase or diiodinase basically which catalyzes this step, T4 to T3, this basically activates this particular enzyme. So this is the, some of our results, some of our results here, healthy control you can see here, this is the disease control, this is basically T3 which is very important, which become near to normal, T4 also near to the normal range. So we have used the control as a levothyroxine. This is the other parameters like TSH and all. We did detailed studies. Now this commercialization is very important for the fishermen also, other than for common man, because one of the mandates is our also work for the fishermen. So if you develop some compounds, the fishermen will get seaweed cultivars will get ultimate beneficiaries. So this is the seaweed, some of the compounds which you would be able to identify. This is our product, some of our products also is very highly active against the lipid peroxidation. We did detailed study against this is a polyunsaturated fatty acid, you can see DHA and EPA. If you keep, this is the problem of some of the products available like a cod liver oil or some of the liver oils which are available in the market. They claim that, that it is stable and very good for health, but on the self, that is the real problem. On the self if you keep, because this is very, very highly degradable and unstable. If you keep it on self for a long time, this because it is having the very many double bonds, like five and six double bonds, the number of double bonds get reduced on keeping in the self. You can see here EPA and DHA are significantly reduced. We have taken many products while doing this particular work from the market and which we could, have, we could not able to find any DHA, EPA sometimes for 0.05 percent, not there at all, but they claim it is used for the DHA and EPA. So when purchasing, we have to be really, really careful whether how much active ingredient what for you are buying is really there. So the problem is stability. So we have worked in detail on the stability part of polyunsaturated fatty acid. So you can see here our compound could able to stabilize these two important fatty acid, poly DHA and EPA. We did accelerated self life study and induction time is also very high. You can see more than 4.5 hours means it is really high. Some of the polysaccharide which we could able to isolate from the seaweeds, I am not going into much detail of the structural part of it. This is from isolated from the Coppophagus alvarezi, some seaweeds. This is detailed structural part of it of the polysaccharide which has been identified by my students. Some of the compounds, basically this is alkaloids, some of the alkaloids which we could able to identify other compounds, uh, just a piperazine derivative, furonyl hydroxy, that oxygenated 2H chromine derivative have been isolated. Halogen derivatives also we could able to isolate it. Uh, isolate. These are some of the examples of the halogen derivative as well as cyclic ether, some of the works in our laboratory. Green seaweeds also we could able to find, basically we could able to develop a library of the bioactive molecules as I told earlier, which is of immense value 
if you go for synthesis in future. Nidarians are also very important resource. Nidarians are very important resource. You can see the colorful organisms how they are. So very good. But only problem is that access. We cannot identify. Even if you are, even you, even if you access those things, who will identify this? It is very difficult. Sometimes they are very new. So there is a dearth of knowledge in this particular subject area. But compounds are very beautiful, very important, interesting. So that is the only problem. You cannot, if you go back again, you may not be able to identify the particular bioactive compounds. Ceramides, the Sinolaria candidata, this particular organism, bryostatin, which I told earlier, this one of the very under phase two clinical trials against Alzheimer's disease, sesquiterpenes, cloven type sesquiterpenes have been identified. This is some of the sesquiterpenes, C15 terpenoids, tricyclic sesquiterpenes, some of the compounds just to show you how beautiful the molecules are. This is basically NFKB activation from the Sinularia species. This is the group of compounds from the Sembranoids. Okay. This is some of the compounds from the Sembranoids. So that actually PTP1B4 inhibitor tunicates some of the compounds. Uh, it's a very important group of compounds. Didamine. This is some of the alkaloids which you could be able to identify. Meroterpenes. Molluscan resource is also very important resource, pharmacophore. This is basically one of the Australian groups sometimes we got associated with the Australian group. So we could able to work also along with her, this diacathis orbita, this basically Australia, this is isotin derivatives, basically against the use for rheumatoid arthritis, <laughs> dolastatin, which we have told earlier, some of the compounds, anti-cancer here, against cigar, this Babylonia japonica, this is basically gastropod, conotoxin, I think you are aware, Indian Institute of Science, I think they are working on this particular toxin, kahalaride F, which I told earlier, Schwerer group they work. Mollusk, this is a very important resource, bioactive compounds. So this is some of our work, basically. Some of the compounds, so this has been licensed to the company. This is from Kalu Makaya, basically green muscle extract, which has been licensed. Basically lipoxygenase, cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitor, inducive enzyme, inducible enzyme. This is the mechanism of action, how it works, basically. This is the animal model part of the work which have been studied. We did some studies also. So we could able to find, we could able to give this particular many, all the products actually have distributed to the patients actually. So we could able to see in the hospital trial, the rheumatoid arthritis factor, which is a prognostic factor of the rheumatoid arthritis, one of the prognostic factor. You can see it is a more than 256 in rheumatoid arthritis. It came down to near normal around 32. So we got patent for this particular product. So also we work on polyunsaturated fatty acid. We are having a product, a polyunsaturated basically developed from the body oil, unlike the cod liver oil, which is available in the market. So this is the mechanistic action, how it works. So this is our product, which is under license. So now coming to the last part of my slides, now the challenges are many actually. We have to go for, because as I told, you cannot go always. Depth is a problem, accessibility is a problem. So once you identify, you have to go for chemical synthesis, biosynthesis, or control harvest, like microorganisms, aquaculture. We can aquaculture this, like seaweeds or microalgae. You can there is a, always a probability of cultivating them in the laboratory condition. So basically, we need a collaborative work. It is not. So I feel sometimes very handicapped as a chemist. That's so why I don't know much about biology part of it, or maybe who can identify. This is a really hard we face. Who can identify the particular organisms? So this is a really, really challenge. So there is a real integrations are necessary. Now the clinical part is also, that is also a real hurdle. We identify the particular compound, but who will do the clinical trial and somebody who does, he should do perfectly. So there is a really, really a group, a group should be there, an integrated group should be there, which should be developed to do a very good work on the marine natural product chemistry. So basically this is a real, so that's what it is, coherent and attractive box on the food industry and pharmaceutical industry. And thank you very much. Thank you so much.